Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and on today's show, we are talking with CNIB. My guest today is Tammy Orr Arakwalu. She's a low vision specialist. Welcome to the show, Tammy. Thank you for having us. So tell me about what CNIB's role is here in the community. Well, we're a charitable organization, and we're all across Canada. We're national. Here in Thunder Bay, we have an office that provides services to all of northwestern Ontario. We cover from the Manitoba border east to Manitouaj and everywhere in between. Awesome, awesome. And, um, you know, this is a service for people who are visually impaired or partially blind, fully uh, blind. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of the most commonly diagnosed eye diseases that you see that people come and, uh, and get help with. The four most common eye diseases are macular degeneration, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, and cataracts. And CNIB has an app called an eye simulator, which is uh, a really good app because it gives people who are family members, friends, a better understanding of the eye disease because it's really hard for people to understand how someone with a vision loss might see. Because looking at someone who has vision loss, they look like everybody else. It's hard mm -hmm. to tell that there's something going on at the back of their eye that's causing them some difficulties to see. Right. And these things can happen to somebody at, at any stage of life. Any so age. you could be born with it, or it could be something that you're diagnosed with sometime in life uh, during you know, childhood or in adulthood. So um, your services are meant to help people no matter. Uh, all ages. Right, wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about vision services and uh, what you provide that way to help people. If someone is experiencing vision loss, a low vision specialist such as myself can provide services to help that person learn to live with that vision, how to accommodate, um, show them techniques such as using better lighting, better color contrast, doing a one-on-one -on -one assessment to assess their functional vision and recommend devices that may assist them, teach them how to use those devices such as a magnifier. Right, right. And let's talk a little bit about some of those um, devices and things like that because I know you had talked before that there's uh, an app that there is um, that you have and different things. So what are some of the, some of the tools that are available to help um, people who are visually impaired? Some of the tools that would mm -hmm. help them? Yeah, like that you're using with um, vision services that help people that... Well, there's magnifiers. They, they come in variety. There's handheld, there's stand magnifiers, there's some with light, there's some without. There's also video magnifiers, which are a little bit more technology savvy. There's machines called CCTVs. They're, they look like a computer, cross between a computer and a TV that someone can use who has vision loss. It enlarges everything to be much bigger because when you're using a magnifier, everything is very small. Right, right. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the app. So is that to help people um, detect if they're having some visual issues or no it's more for the family members friends general okay. public to understand what the eye condition is during a low vision assessment we talk with the client about their eye condition to help them better understand their eye disease and how it is going to help how it is going to help um, affect them functionally but the app is more for people who are family members or friends because they often don't understand how someone sees for example someone mm. with macular degeneration loses their central vision and they may not look at you to see you mm -hmm. and family members may not understand why but the app because you can put the camera on a picture or you can put the pit you can put the camera onto a face they get the understanding through the app that they can see with macular degeneration why their family member might not be looking at them when they're Right. trying to see them better because they're using their peripheral or their eccentric viewing to see them better. Right. And I guess that's an important point too is that, you know, you also have services that help the families that are working with somebody in their family that has a visual impairment. There's lots of great resources on our website. Um, there's how-to videos. There's um, information for caregivers on our website as well. Wonderful. And then independent living skills. So what are some things that you do to work with people to help them build, you know, confidence skills, everyday skills, how to, you know, cope with everyday activities? Well, when you have vision loss, there's lots of things we take for granted, such as pouring yourself a cup of coffee or making yourself your dinner. Um, things become more difficult mm -hmm. with vision loss. So the independent living skills specialist teaches those clients adaptations to make those tasks easier. 
Right. There's things like liquid level indicators that can help. By, you put it in the cup and when you're pouring, it will make a noise so that you can stop pouring. Right. Wonderful. And how about travel? I would think that, you know, if you're in your home and you're doing things, you can, you know, um, have a level of comfort because you get to know where things are. But once you're outside your front door and you're going places, you might um, be scared to do those kind of things. So yeah. what kind of assistance do you have to help with that? Our orientation mobility specialists teach independent and safe travel. Something like if you just want to go to the grocery store, or if you want to be able to travel across Canada, use buses, trains, um, they'll teach navigation skills to people to make them more independent and make travel safer and easier. And there's different canes that they might recommend, a white cane. There's three different kinds. There's a mobility cane if somebody's already using one. The white cane would help to identify that they have vision loss. The identification cane would be used to identify them as someone with vision loss. Some people carry them when they're in grocery stores just as a tool to get more assistance if needed. And then the mobility cane, for someone who has quite restricted vision, they would use it to get around. You see them tapping it or yeah. side to side as they walk down the street. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. And then also, you know, if somebody's, you know, been diagnosed with a uh, eye disease that they know they're going to lose partial part of their sight or maybe even all of their sight, you know, what kind of support is available to somebody? Is there support groups uh, available in the city? Uh, is there something that exists for families? Maybe we could talk a little bit about that. Currently we have, in our office, we offer a group called Adjustment to Vision Loss. It's a group when clients, when people become a client, they can identify whether or not they want that to attend the group. But it's also available to people later on if they've, you know, vision loss is different for everybody. So they may not be ready when they're first diagnosed. They may be ready two, five, six years, ten years down the road. Um, mm -hmm. So that group, it, typically we run a few a year. Um, they're six weeks, one afternoon a week. And they're usually facilitated by volunteers right. and staff. Um, and it's a great way for people to get support and encouragement and to understand that they're not alone. Right. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. And um, how about, um, I know we talked a little bit about services for the family and, um, and let's talk a little bit about that and also your early intervention services. CNIB provides early intervention services for zero to six. Um, there's, that's a specific category, specific service, but we also provide services to children as they grow and age because they need to learn how to be independent and want, you know, how to have a productive life, learn the skills they need to to be, to be independent. Um, the workers will also provide support to the family members because when they're children, teenagers, they need the family members to understand and to be able to access resources and there are groups and we've had um, in partnership with other agencies such as a, a group out of Southern Ontario Views events for parents and families to understand and meet other families who have children with vision loss. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And if somebody wanted to become a CNIB client, what would be the first steps that they would take to do that? Well, first thing they should do is go see their eye doctor and get an updated eye report and ask their eye doctor to send it to CNIB. And they can also call our CNIB helpline and request for services at, through that helpline. Perfect. Well, we're going to take a quick break, Tammy, but we're going to be right back. We're going to talk more about CNIB. Welcome back to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and on today's show, we've been talking with CNIB. And uh, my guest today is Tammy, who's a low vision specialist. And um, let's talk a little bit about the technology. I know you have a uh, assistive technology specialist or specialist that's involved with CNIB. Let's talk about what their role is and uh, how they help. They assess people to recommend devices um, and technology that would enable them to have access to computers and the information that the rest of us have access to. Um, there's programs that, software programs that enlarge things on the print or there's programs that will talk, audible programs. Um, the technology specialist will recommend those devices and there's someone else that will assist in teaching that person how to use the software or device when they get it. Yeah, 
Wonderful. And that's, I'm sure there's been a lot of advancement in probably the last 5, 10, 20 years in technology and things that could help people just based on how quickly technology advances. So let's talk a little bit about some of the items. I know you brought some. If there's anything that really kind of stands out as being... The, the devices I brought today are more low-end technology. Okay. Um, they're things like talking watches, talking clocks, large print... Um, Bold line paper, large print playing cards, yeah. uh, a video magnifier, and uh, something called a daisy player, which is something a uh, device that allows people to listen to books on audio, like audio books. Mm -hmm. All the devices are available through Shop CNIB. We have a local store at our office at 229 Camelot Street that's open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 until 3 that people can come and buy from. We carry the top 70, 75 items, but they're also available through Shop CNIB, um, which is national. It's in Toronto, and they can phone or go online to order any of the devices. They can request a catalog. Right. Which is nice to be able to go in and get those things because even somebody might have a parent that might need a little extra help with something. So there might be a great tool there that would be able to, to help them just to be able to whether it be read the newspaper or all those kind of everyday little living things that, yeah. that make life just that much easier for sure. Some of the things, um, it's recommended that the person be there if they're going to look for a magnifier. Yeah. Depending on what they need in magnification, they may need to actually see a low vision specialist for an assessment. Right. Because it's like getting a pair of glasses. You don't really know what your prescription is going to be Yes. Very without being without seeing somebody to recommend them. Right, very important point for sure. Um, and then the Lions have a low vision clinic. So what is that? And tell it's, me a little more It's about a Lions it. sponsored, it's a clinic, it's an open house at CNIB the first Thursday of every month and it's from 10 until 4 and there's service staff available so if someone wants to come in, be it someone who is experiencing vision loss or a family member want to come in and find out more information about the services we offer, such as low vision services or independent living or independent travel skills, they can come into the office. They can also at that time have the opportunity to look at the devices in our store mm -hmm. and get information if they don't have access to internet you know, on the different eye conditions or services that we do offer. Wonderful. And uh, you have an exciting event coming up, so the CNIB Technology and Information Fair. So uh, tell me a little bit about um, what goes on at the fair. It's a pretty big event because it, it happens every two years in Thunder Bay. We have vendors from across Canada that come with all their latest technology um, and devices. And we, this year we are having it at the Oliver Road Community Centre because we outgrew CNIB mm. because we also involve community partners that have resources that are beneficial to our clients. So the event is available for anybody to come to, family, friends, clients, um, anybody who wants to see what is available for people who have vision loss. There's vendors um, including Aroga, Optilac, Canadia Log, Frontier Computing and Computer Science, Microcomputer Science Centre and we also have the charitable organizations or the other community partners. There's an organization called AMI, Accessible Media Inc., whose mission is to provide accessible media to people who don't have accessible media. They're going to be here as well, and they're a partner of CNIB. Right. Right. A lot of exciting things that uh, go on during the fair, for sure. And I guess a great opportunity to to try things out firsthand and see what everything's all about and ask those questions to those professionals that's there. Exactly. Because we're a charitable organization, we only have, we don't have everything in our office that we would love to be able to show people. So this is a great opportunity yeah. for them to come and see the devices. Perfect. So when is the event happening and is there a fee to go? No fee to get in. It's Wednesday, May 6th from noon until 7, again at the Oliver Road Community Centre. And anybody can come and we'd love to see as many people who want to come. We want to see them there. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you, Tammy, for being on the show. I know for the last segment, we have um, a couple people joining us from your volunteer services. So we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be right back and talk more with CNIB. 
Welcome back to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and if you're just tuning in today, we've been talking with CNIB. I have two new guests on the show. We have Tannis Boardman, who's the volunteer of, vol or sorry, the coordinator of volunteer services, and Chris Moore, who's the volunteer ambassador. So welcome to the show. Thanks thank for having us. Yes, thank you very much. So before we dig into the whole volunteer portion of uh, CNIB and all the great things that the volunteers uh, do with the organization, let's talk a little bit about funding. So um, CNIB is a charitable uh, organization. How is it that you're able to run the operations in Thunder Bay? Yes, we, uh, CNIB is a charitable organization and we do rely uh, quite heavily on uh, the support from people in our community. Um, a great example of a recent uh, fundraising event in our community was Dining in the Dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a strictly volunteer-led event in support of CNIB and our services. And there are other ways uh, as well that community members can be involved, whether that's through um, a pizza luncheon or a garage sale, um, a yard sale, anything like that, that would generate funds that can be donated to CNIB and make a difference for people living with uh, blindness and partial sight in our community. Perfect. And the Dining in the Dark one was really kind of exciting. I actually saw a little video clip about it. I, wasn't, I was out of town during that time, so I never got to attend it. But let's talk a little bit about what happens. Like you actually walk in and you get a blindfold and you're, you're enjoying your dinner without the benefit of sight. That's right. Yeah. So that's kind of a surprise as to what you're eating, where to find things on your plate. Yeah. You know, tell, tell us a little bit about, about how the evening went. Yeah, um, exactly as you stated there. Um, guests arrive and they're checking in. Um, they receive a blindfold. Um, they're also then receiving sighted guide, which is a, a technique to safely guide someone that isn't um, able to use vision to their benefit. Um, and through the course of the evening, then they're enjoying their meal, um, solely relying on the other senses. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was a great experience for, for people to understand uh, on a better level of where food is placed on a plate and how to navigate to, through your plate to find your proteins and your carbs and, and uh, not, you know, knocking over the wine or the, the mm -hmm. water glasses and things like that. And, engaging in conversation on a different level. Right. And I guess also developing a whole new respect of people who have uh, visual impairments and, and what somebody like that has to live with each day and having that new appreciation and Absolutely. you know all that kind of stuff for sure. Um, you also are a United Way um, uh, organization that uh, receives funds through the United Way. Correct. So uh, if people wanted to do their donations through the United Way, they can do that as well, correct? Yes, they can. And they can also um, visit us online at cnib.ca uh, or to call the helpline to make a donation. Wonderful. So what role does volunteer services play in the big picture of CNIB? Um, volunteer services plays an integral role in the delivery of services um, to our clients. We have a variety of um, volunteer opportunities ranging from direct client service to operations and administrative tasks, leadership and public awareness roles. Um, and it's just, it's an integral part of CNIB because volunteers provide a, a passion and unique perspective to their work and they often have a connection to our mission and uh, have a have an empathy for our clients right wonderful and what does volunteer services offer for people who are looking for volunteer opportunities like maybe let's get some examples of things that people would actually maybe volunteer and be doing certainly um, as I mentioned we do have a wide variety of areas where we have opportunities um, our flagship volunteer role is the vision mate program and that is a direct client service program where a volunteer is matched with a client and they provide one-on-one -on -one sighted assistance and social companionship to a client. Mm -hmm. um, there are other roles uh, including um, our shop CNIB as um, we chatted about earlier that is uh, volunteer supported in our office. Um, the adjustment to vision loss group is supported by volunteers living with vision loss or if they have a, a family member or a close friend um, to be able to support that, as well as um, ambassadors. Um, we have ambassadors like Chris here um, out into the community at uh, varying events to share stories and help raise public awareness about what it is to have vision loss, eye diseases, and things like that. 
Wonderful. And we, like you said, we have an actual volunteer ambassador with us today. <laughs> so Chris, how did you come to be involved with CNIB? Well, when I was about four years old, I actually got bacterial meningitis and um, that attacked my cent central nervous system, particularly my optic nerves. So my optic nerves were damaged and there's nothing actually wrong with the function of my eyeball or anything like that. It's the information getting through my optic nerves to my brain. And this left me at about 10 over 200. It would be the ratio of my sight. And um, after that, shortly after that, I got involved with CNIB for obvious reasons because I needed a lot of help with certain things like technology, things like that. Um, particularly the magnifiers and reading glasses for me personally, because I do have some vision. I use it a lot. Like I, I love to use my glasses to read things and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So uh, the CNRB has helped a lot with that. And from there, because I've had so much help over the years from the CNRB, I, I, I have to give back to it. It's yeah. just something I want to do. Oh, that's so wonderful. And you actually went through the adjustment uh, to vision loss support group. Um, so maybe talk about your, um, experience as a participant in that program and now you're actually going in to co-facilitate that program which is a wonderful way to be get, able to give back so maybe talk about both sides of it yeah um we've mentioned avl a few times already on this program and <clears throat> personally i believe it's one of the most valuable parts of the cnib i mean someone uh that's partially sighted or that loses their vision when they're part way through their life is it can be devastating, absolutely devastating. And for me, I lost my vision at a young age. Like I said, I was four years old, so I almost grew with my vision. Mm -hmm. I was so young when it happened that I, it didn't, I didn't see it affecting me the same way. So I went to AVL, I, I got to see sort of where everybody else is at. I've never really been the type of person to think of how I function. And I got a good understanding about how I function when I went to AVL and I mean, I ride a bike, so this is a very big deal to a lot of people because technically I guess I shouldn't be able to ride a bike. So it's really neat to a lot of people that I can do that. And you'd be surprised how inspirational that can be to people. If you Absolutely. tell them that you ride a bike, it'll make them want to even just go out and go for a walk down to the store even. So, um, and now that I'm going to be co-facilitating it, I think that uh, I just want to keep doing this. I want to keep showing people what you can be capable of with, with partial sight or blindness. So mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And such an inspiration, like you said, you know, when people can see that, you know, when they see somebody that's similar or has something that uh, they can relate to, then it makes them believe that they can do it too. And so that's a wonderful thing that you're doing. So what do you find that you most enjoy about volunteering? And if somebody was interested in volunteering, what could they expect from um, volunteering for CNIB? Well, there's actually a wide range of, of volunteer opportunities. Uh, it's just before we came in, we were discussing it. I, I, I'm not sure which role I fit into. I'm going to say ambassador, but we've I've been able to do a whole bunch of things. Like we got to do, uh, we got to bring some of the really young clients, the children, to um, a ski nationals event, mm -hmm. which was really neat because they might not necessarily ever take part in that, and if they get to see that kind of event or experience it they might want to become skiers one day. Mm -hmm. They might want to try skiing or, or try some other, some other sports event that they might be interested in. And now they're aware of skiing too. So um, things like that or um, something else we did is just uh, they'll set up like uh, information booths. We did a couple of those. We did one at um, Intercity Mall and we also did one at uh, Victoriaville Mall. Yeah. Both are really good experiences. A lot of people like to come up to the table and hear my story and hear mm -hmm. why I'm involved. So yeah, wonderful. lots of different opportunities if you're interested in volunteering. Awesome, that's wonderful. I really want to thank you, Chris, and I want to thank you, Tannis, and of course, Tammy, for being on the show today and you know, telling the community about all the wonderful things that CNIB does here in Thunder Bay and our region. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today and be sure to tune in next week for more on In Your Neighborhood. <laughs>